you can just tell. So you can see already just the difference in intensity and value between the two of these is gonna make this a much more high contrast look. Um, this is a really itty sponge. I would never wanna do a big wall with this thing, it's tiny. This would be great for like rusting handrails cause it's little, it's petite. Um, but yeah, so they all have a little character. They'll all make little marks that are repetitive. So unless you, you know, remember to spin the tool around, play with its different edges and character shapes. So the kind of stuff we'd use this for would be stone, brick, um, foliage, aging and distressing, rusts, patinas on metal. Um, sponge work is a huge, huge, huge skill in scenic art. We use it all the time. Um, and also, you know, faux wall spongy treatments too for your interiors, depending on the design. Um, a couple important things to note with sponges, never let them dry with paint in them. They will get destroyed. They'll turn to plastic and be ruined. So if you're going to walk away from one for a while, just leave it in your water bucket. Um, I'm going to show you rag rolling. I need to grab a roll. Rag to roll. Uh, it's got t-shirt rags, the good old normal chunk of t-shirt, right? Uh, same with the sponge, get it wet so it can be pliable and movable. Squeeze as much water out of it as you can so it is just damp, okay? Um, I don't want to dilute the paint a ton when I'm doing this. So... I'll show you a gray rag roll. You guys can pick what color you want to do it, black or gray. Does not matter to me. Um, but yeah, so this is just like a cotton kind of t-shirt. It's probably some kind of blend. Doesn't really matter. Uh, if you're using like clothing scraps and stuff, just make sure there's not like a label that's really square that's gonna like make a stamp for you. I cut the label out of this. When you're kind of doing one of these with hands, hand work, you want to kind of create a kind of interesting folded messy bundle of fabric you're going to charge it with paint the same kind of way you charge a sponge by dipping it into a pile of paint and kind of moving it around on a on a pallet board or a lunch tray and same idea except this is going to make i need more paint don't have enough paint on my tray um this is going to make a kind of abstracted shape that is vaguely organic, but also not supremely organic like the sponges. Um, you can do this kind of thing with uh, rags like this. I need to get it so I'm not losing my paint area. Um, I don't use this a ton, a ton but it can do really, really cool, nice things. Um, really, it's primarily a faux finishing thing. Um, sometimes you can, do, you can do like really nice techniques with this kind of idea of ragging um, by pulling out paint. So you would have like a base color down and then put a glaze or a wash of some kind. And while it's still wet, you would blot and remove paint. So I've done that to do some aging things and to create, like I've done this on the walls of like an old Adobe house set. Um, you can use it, you can do this with like newsprint or like paper bundles, you know, all sorts of stuff to get different kind of looks. Um, I've seen some really cool stuff. Uh, this is also good at, so there's a place where I drug the tool before I lifted it. That's something to avoid. Um, I've used, used this kind of thing in creating big, kind of like marble-ish mm -hmm. floors um, on the walls of an adobe set just to create some kind of plaster look difference. And so the walls didn't read super flat because we didn't, we had enough money to put a little bit of physical texture so the walls weren't uber flat, but not as much as the designer was really after. Yeah. So I use this to kind of try and help accentuate it and like that idea of trowel lines and stuff from how plasters are applied. Yeah. This, this worked decently well. 
for me to be able to use a really big piece and kind of do like a chunk like this size in like one or two touches. Um, so that's where it can be really nice. Uh, yeah, and the removal stuff is really nice. Uh, I've seen really cool stuff done with like saran wraps. Um, you smash wet paint down and then stick it in and pull it off and it makes these really groovy things. Um, I've definitely seen someone do that on like to make glass look dirty and opaque and kind of chalked out and stuff in a really weird way. Um, this also kind of reminds me, so that's another not ideal. Um, it also kind of reminds me of like uh, sometimes the way like, not like ice, but you know, like the, the dirt from snow and weather like that on glass and some other surfaces. Um, but yeah, I've also done a kind of more fast and loose and we utilize this in like my really weird way of making quick marble by throwing instead of controlling and touching a lot. Um, so this can definitely be a really nice marbling technique. You're not going to do it everywhere, but like you can, yeah, you can make some really neat movement -y things. But yeah, the floor we did this on was a really beautiful, from above, kind of inspired view of like land and water and earth from above. Not like super space above, but like a helicopter view or something. Yeah. Or like an old map. That kind of feeling mixed with marble was kind of like the designer wanted it to look indoors and outdoors. It was for Sound of Music. Yeah. And it was beautiful colors and it was the whole stage floor, which is a big floor, and we were like throwing rags at it um, as underpainting because it had this kind of it looked like you were almost looking at stuff through water yeah. so the way that white hot reflection of the high value reflection mm -hmm. off water that's not still yeah. this would like be a really good way of kind of capturing that idea mm -hmm. over top of something so not the most beautiful ragging i've done in my life um but you, same kind of technique ideas as the sponge um and again Yes, you can. You can totally wrap one of these around on a roller buddy. Yeah. Um, I would need a bigger, a bigger uh, chunk of rag. Yeah. But yeah, if my hand was a roller, you know, I'd kind of do it around and then secure it with rubber bands. Mm -hmm. So that's also something if you're interested in playing with today, we yeah. can set one of those up. Um, and again, same with sponge when you're done with it. Just leave it in water or go and rinse it all the way mm -hmm. so it's a clear. Uh, cleaning these things, you just put them in the cleaning buckets and squeeze them a bunch. Mm -hmm and try and rinse as much of the paint out. The sponges, I care much more about them getting really properly rinsed. The rags, we want them to just not have a lot of paint coming out in that last rinse cycle. So the last thing I'm gonna show you guys real quick is how to do um, an ombre blend or a directional blend, which means linear in quality. 